Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. This week we're gonna do some electric power steering. I've seen a lot of people do this with a Prius power steering unit. I'm gonna use a Kia power steering unit. One advantage that the Kia power steering system has is it has the power steering module right on the motor. So if you're doing a Prius, you have to buy the motor or steering column, and then you also have to buy separately the power steering module. This one's all in one. I got mine for $49. You might be wondering why you might need electric assisted power steering. Let me show you a few reasons why. For this build, it's going to be a Tesla swapped Nissan 300ZX. So that means for this particular build, the motor usually has a belt driven pulley for the power steering pump. For most vehicles, if you're traveling at speed, you really don't need much in the way of power steering assist. However, if you're in a parking lot with a heavier vehicle, it really comes in handy. So if you're trying to free up your motor or if you got just another reason, I'm gonna walk you through what I did for this car. For today's sponsor, we have Rockware. This is the RC28. It's a 1080p AI-assisted webcam with pro recording microphone. Looks really good. And I love the physical, like, hey, camera's off, camera's on. All right, so if you're just putting on the monitor, kind of hook it on about like so, and then this can swivel. It also has this feature, which you can uh, put on a tripod. I'm gonna do a comparison here. This is with the Rockware. So I've selected both the camera and microphone. Okay, so now this is the other microphone and camera that comes with the computer. So one thing I'll notice, this one is very much close up the other one gives you a much bigger field of view. So this is the first combination streaming camera and gaming mic. The microphone is four times larger than a typical webcam microphone. Larger microphones generally offer a better frequency response, improved sensitivity, and overall audio performance compared to standard webcam microphones. This supports up to 2K at 30 frames per second or 1080p at 60 frames per second. It has a single touch field of view adjustment from 60 degrees to 85 degrees. It has a fast 0.2 second autofocus. It also comes with landscape or portrait mode and the base rotates 360 degrees. This would go very well with a gaming setup, or for me, I'm kind of a new startup company. I think to put your best foot forward, it's nice to have virtual meetings with a better quality camera and microphone. If you want to upgrade your webcam or gaming experience, I'll leave a link in the video description below. So this is the plug, and basically I, I'm just gonna splice. I don't know, I might take this apart, see if I can uh, make a new connector, or I might just splice on, we'll see. I'm on my own, broken along. I feel the rain crashing down all around this empty town. I'm searching for the lost. So all you need for the motor to work is it's got two large cables here, a positive and a negative. And then there's just one pin here that's just a 12 volt, and that uh, is that'll put it in fail-safe mode. These ones are the ones that are getting the power to drive the motor. That's just the one to uh, turn on the controller here. So I've just got a battery here, I've got a couple fuses, and I'm gonna try and hook up my electric power steering and make sure it works. No sparks, no sparks, no sparks. I heard a noise. All right, so it's working. Basically, if I turn this one, this one over here turns and it's got a lot more force. So this would be the steering wheel side, this would be the steering rack side. All right, on the Nissan here, we're looking at the steering rack. The engine had a hydraulic pump that was belt driven. And so some of these lines go to that and we're gonna cut them off and create a loop because what we're doing is we're having the column be a powered steering column. All right, so now these lines can come out. There we go. So I've got these ones, I've got tubing put on. These are different sizes, so these are different size tubing. They're both high pressure tubing. So all I need to do is uh, get a barb that kind of goes from here to here, and we'll put this all back together. But you don't care, you're unaware. Keep moving like the scars aren't even there. It's in the air, like a blazing flare. Just stay, cause the flames will burn us back. So I can maybe get this to go under there. Do I want that? And hopefully not drop the crush washer. I'll probably need to get under the car, under this, just to see what that looks like. Make sure we're not uh, in a bad spot where it's hitting the wheels or something. Here's one, there's the other one, and they kind of come out right there, kind of in the wheel area. And I just think there's too many things moving. I don't really like that. So we're gonna try and swap things around so we can get a better location for these. Now we are far away from wheel moving stuff. It's just kind of tucked away on this side of the engine bay. So I think that'll work well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try and top things off with 
the power steering fluid. Now again, it really doesn't need it for, I'll call it hydraulic purposes, but I wanna make sure we've got lots of fluid to kind of lube the rack. Just adding a little power steering fluid. And then we'll uh, put the steering column back and forth to kind of make sure everything's full. This is the power steering unit from the Kia. And what we need to do is we need to kind of make this a lot shorter. So we need to kind of chop it off. This has an outer column and then an inner shaft. And to start with, we're gonna cut off the outer column, but this whole thing, so again, that much right there, we're gonna try and put it right here. So uh, this will also need to be cut. So we're gonna weld that side on and that side on to the sides of this. And that will hopefully allow us to have power steering. I've already checked. We can get another steering column if we mess this one up for about 100 bucks, all is not lost. Okay, I've been taking some measurements. So I think we're good. We just need to start cutting, which is always kind of a point of no return. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off just this section so we can still interface with the steering rack. We'll make another cut up here. And then essentially we're gonna weld that in between. So we'll have to cut that long shaft as well. Make sure we get all the lengths just right. Make sure everything's perfectly aligned on axis. Then I think we're good to go. So I 3D printed a piece to make sure that when I weld, these are perfectly aligned. So I've got a little gap here where I can spot weld in a couple places, then I can take this off. But yeah, this is really a, a nice snug fit. We'll make sure it's perfectly aligned. I added just a little bit of water here in the trough. Um, I just want to keep things cool, but uh, we'll just do a couple tack welds here. So that's a good way to tack it. Make sure it's nice and true. So we'll go ahead and do a full weld. It's hard to get a pretty weld with lots of starts and stops, but that should be very, very secure. All right, I've got a shaft coupling here. This will be for the electric power steering. One end, I think we need to machine out just a little bit. That shouldn't be too much of a problem because this is aluminum. I think it's just like 50 thou we need to take off. So I'm excited to get this uh, in and see if it works. Right here, we're like pretty close to just about 0.7. So we're just gonna drill out uh, the one side to match. I think that should do it. All right, so here we are. That fits just perfectly. Again, the screw's what makes it really clamp on. I think I might even just add a little bit of epoxy to it as well. That way this will be kind of just one piece. Because this is a split shaft collar, um, I think it's fine to kind of get this uh, very well bonded on. Yeah, and if I thought about it, I may have even got this one out of steel so I could weld it on, but this should be just fine. It says the uh, torque capability is I think 330 foot pounds. So again, that's way more than we can input uh, from the driver. So I think we should be fine. All right, so right up there you can see the shaft coupling. I've not tightened it to this one yet, but it is to the steering column. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten things up and then I'll get things wired and we'll try it out. Oh, I should say one other thing. I've not done this yet. It needs a bracket. So this needs to somehow get mounted to the firewall. So we've got lots of holes and things to choose from. So it shouldn't be a problem. It currently cannot uh, twist around me. It'll run into the firewall. It's just got some uh, kind of bulkheads and things. So we can try it out even without a bracket. All right, there it is in place. I'm just not feeling real comfortable about uh, the connection there. I realize it says it's supposed to be for like 800 inch pounds or something like that. But the fact that it's not like the two halves are not physically connected, it just, I don't know. It makes me feel a little uneasy. So I'm actually gonna swap out that. I'm gonna do some more welding. I'm gonna have a keyway and different coupler that's uh, much more robust. So I bought a keyed shaft along with a serious shaft coupling. So this way, in order to get this to break apart, it'll actually have to shear the key weight. So this one's rated for like, I can't remember, it's like over a hundred foot pounds. So I think we should be very well with this one. The other one just made me feel a little bit nervous. So the plan is uh, we'll go ahead and section this one off, weld this one on, same thing to the other side. So we'll split this one in half or we'll measure and see how much we need on each half. And then uh, we'll get this one all made up. All right, like last time we 
3D printed an alignment fixture here. We're gonna tack it several places and then do a full weld. All right, so we welded it and then kind of ground to clean it up a little bit. All right, so I don't know what happened the last time, but it didn't get quite straight. So we're doing this again. And then, um, so beyond just this, I've also got this one. It's just gonna make sure it's centered up higher as well. All right, I made another little fixture this way, I'll say aligned further away from just that little point. That way I can still stick in the welding torch, tack it, and then we can take this one off. This one we can also move around, so that'll work out well too. No point in blaming you, you did not know. I tacked this one in place while it was in the vehicle. So that this whole bracket is just to make sure that the power steering unit doesn't rotate. So I've got that one ready. I'll just do a couple welds here and I think we'll be ready to go. All right, disregard all the hoses, that's for another episode. We're just gonna do steering real quick, make sure that uh, things are somewhat secure. I think it's doing okay. It's got still just a little movement. I just got it fastened in one point, so I might just wanna come up with another bracket so it's fastened in two places. So I got it to uh, Painted, you know, corrosion protected, bolted back in place. I put on a, one more additional brace. Got pretty much everything hooked up. I've got one more wire to put on and we'll see, uh, make sure it clicks and uh, gives us power assisting. Yeah, I heard the click. All right, let's get the car on the ground so we can kind of feel the effects of the power steering. Let's see how it works. Seems like it's pretty good. Let me try without. I gotta feel with and without. I'm gonna take you along and show you how this works. So first we'll uh, take power assist off. So that's off. We come into the wonderful interior. I don't know how to describe it, but like, if you go kind of like that, it's like, geez. Oh my gosh. And then like, yeah. So I mean, it's pretty, pretty heavy. Um, you can do it, but again, not, Oh, yeah, if you've got like a bad angle, it's not gonna work too well. So let's go ahead and turn on the power assist. You like my fuse situation here? So that's the main power. This is kind of the signal power. And as soon as I put this on, you'll hear a click over here. So there's the click. Go back in the car and then here, it's just really easy. 
So yeah, pretty nice setup. So we got a lot accomplished. Um, I know lots of people will tune in just to see how to do this. Um, I'm actually gonna leave a, in the video description, there's a whole list of power steering modules that you can use that, again, if you just give them 12 volts, they'll work in kind of a fail safe mode. The Kia is one of them. You've also got Prius. And anyways, there's some more that might be surprising to you. And if you're just interested, I'll leave a list so you can see any of those that'll work with just 12 volts. All right, so that episode was a long time in the making. You probably saw the MG, uh, you probably saw the Porsche. Those have kind of moved in different spots. We now have the Jeep here. So we've got a lot more coming your way. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. I've seen a lot of people do this with, what is it? Um, for this build, it's gonna be a Tesla swapped. It's a 300, golly, I suck. So if you're just trying to free up some horse,